<laughs> to our next category, and that is our Keep It Real segment. Um, we're going to talk about the most popular animation of at least December 2020 on to January 2021, and that is Soul. So if those of you who do not know, Soul was an animation that focused on a care a jazz musician who was also he was a struggling jazz musician to kind of like who always wanted to have his big break but he was in a place in his life where he was just a band teacher he finally gets the big break of his lifetime to play with a renowned jazz saxophonist and then ultimately dies and his soul ascends and then it's just him going through the process of trying to put his soul back in his body while also mentoring another soul as to why they should want to go down to earth there's a little bit more to that, but that's like the short, you know, base type of summary that I can give you. Yeah. Ultimately, Pixar had a lot of rave reviews for this project. Disney and Pixar had a lot of rave reviews in regards to this being a very thought out animation, an animation that focused mainly on people of color. Um, even with focus on uh, characters of color, it was a lot of elements that felt very detailed and you could definitely tell that they had a lot of, they had black animators in the room to say like, this is authentic, this isn't authentic. So it was also really nice. Mm -hmm. But also with this project came a lot of negative reviews. And one of the reasonable arguments that is a lot of the time when black characters are animated or we have animations that focus inherently on black stories or black characters, they're often not a human being for most of the movie. Um, yeah, also, to, I want to stop you right there because um, I definitely, we definitely want to talk about like that whole thing. But uh, after that, I think we should go into more of like a spoiler, like kind of talking more about like what actually happened in the movie. So at that point, we'll definitely let you know that like if you don't want to hear spoilers, you can like skip to the next section. So just throwing that out there. But yeah, so we can talk more about some of the issues, just general issues with the film. Lead, lead the conversation, Shaka. Uh, so yeah, so I mean, as you guys know from watching the trailers, uh, <laughs> early in the movie, uh, what's his name? His name's like Joe, Joe Gardner, played by mm -hmm. Jamie Foxx, dies, and <laughs> like within the first five to it's, ten minutes. Yeah, it's pretty early. Uh, and he becomes a soul, and at that point, he's like an animated character. So I mean. He's like a blob. He's like a blob. blob. <laughs> so the issue with that is just Hollywood's tendency to change black animated characters into non-human beings. So you think about shows like uh, Princess and the Frog. She's uh, a frog, Lily, 90%. <laughs> uh, what's the movie with Will Smith where he turns into a pigeon? Uh, Will Smith? Oh, uh, it was like Spy, I think. Like something yeah. like Spy. Yep. I saw, uh, I'm going to have to shout out uh, Kristen Acuna from Insider.com. She mentions just being as a New Yorker that it's so disrespectful to change the character to a pigeon because it's just a nasty animal. Uh, but yeah, it's just like stuff like that, man. It's just um, it's just kind of sad, bro, because it's like you finally get the first black lead in a Pixar movie, and they can't be a black character for the whole time. It's like you have to change them into something else. I mean, it makes you wonder like about the people behind the film. I know at some point they did bring in people of color to help with the film but i don't know man it just leaves a lot to be desired i mean what are your opinions on that specific like issue um i've i have a lot of criticism with it i know i might get in trouble for this but that is largely one of the reasons why princess tiana is not my favorite disney princess because my only like people love that animation, but I have to really break it down to people like you really only saw her as a human being or even saw her as a princess for maybe 10, 15 minutes of the entire movie. Mm -hmm. We still have yet to get a second installment of the movie at all. Like we've gotten all types of Sleeping Booty 1, 2, 3, Cinderella 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Snow White 1, 2. And here we are several years later and still haven't gotten a princess Tiana like second film where we could really just focus on Tiana and Prince Naveen's relationship and them going to his country of origin and just kind of exploring that and maybe having a quote-unquote scenario again where she they get turned into frog or Naveen or somebody they know gets turned into the frog and them trying to help that family member we haven't had nothing like that so my only real experience with finally being able to see a princess that like looks like me she was an animal like she was a fucking reptile for like most of the movie <laughs> 
it's like disrespectful and yeah, so when yeah. i think about a lot of black animations when it comes to films or black animations period my, my only time i really got to see myself represented was in television shows you know mm-hmm. you have, have codename kids next door static shock and boondocks you know. yes those are the and, Bo- and boondocks is a like pretty much an adult cartoon and so it's unfortunate that the only time that like black kids can kind of see themselves in animation is a largely on tv shows and even if it is tv shows it mainly is for older tv shows that i grew up with you know from the early 2000s to like 2010 right now like the only thing that they can say that they seen where like the character was a human being for that the entire movie and seemed very powerful or graceful is um miles morales in spider uh spider-man spidey verse yeah. um and Shout even then <laughs> yes and even then it's just kind of like also infuriating with that because i get the whole point of trying to be timely with a lot of projects specifically when it comes to black subject matters but even with you know the spider verse there was a point in the movie where he gets pulled over by a cop and he raises his hands as like the hands up don't shoot, you know, you know, uh, movement that is largely centered around the Black Lives Matter movement. So it's like even in animations where we finally get a character that pretty much looks like us or is reflective of us, we are still constantly reminder, reminded of our harsh realities when it comes to violence against Black bodies or we're giving the stereotype we're stereotype where Black people are, are inherently animalistic or they're not humans, you know? I think it's to a different, I guess to a deeper point too that we can like quickly touch on. It's just like the whole idea of like, yes, you want to tell stories that tell like black, you know, experiences, but I do feel like a lot of films are really focused on negative experiences. Even though I get it, like you want to show like realistic stuff. Yeah. Every now and then, like every day my life is not filled with I'm black and I can face racism at every (laughs) point. No. Our life is a largely centered around joy, grace, elegance, love, you know, happiness. And we have moments when we step out in the outside world where, where it so happens by people who are ignorant, who are supremacists, who invoke hate, you know, um, discomfort, microaggressions. But that is a, not a large part of who we are. There, I have mo- so many experiences of having an abundance of happiness and joy and like feeling moments of being fulfilled in comparison, that seemed my new and my experiences with, you know, racism, bigotry, and like sadness. That's why I do want to shout out the Proud Family movie. One of the classics, bro. One of the greatest films, animated films. I don't care. <laughs> also one of the greatest shows. Just, you yeah. Know, we need more of that. We need a, we need a sequel. Bring it yeah. back. Uh, but at this point, uh, there are more like race issues with this, but this is at the point where we're about to go into some spoilers really quick. No, no, no. So just a little heads up. Uh, so as I go back to this article and like, like once again, shout out to her, Kristen, Kristen Acuna for really like putting this in a very easy to read concise way to you can really like pinpoint like the issues, you know what I'm saying? Uh, mm-hmm. One of the other major issues is, <laughs> I mean, all right, this is kind of the middle. We, we could go in order, but I just want to get to this is the point when that one soul comes back to chase Joe when he comes back to Earth, and like he mistakes him for another black character. You, re- you remember that? Oh, <laughs> oh that oh, <laughs> I, pretty racist. <laughs> oh, I completely fucking forgot about that. Yo, <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. It's not great. It's that not great. So fucked up. <laughs> it's not great. <laughs> Was. Yo, I forgot about that, bro. That's fucked up, bro. <laughs> it's not great. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. The other thing, too, that she really like, harped on a lot was the whole fact that Tina Fey's character, uh, which is like- A white number, woman. Number 22 or whatever, <laughs> comes back into the black man's body. And like at that point, the film really becomes about the white woman like experiencing the world. It's really not about the black dude at all at that point. And then it like it turns into a thing where Joe gives up his life to save this white woman. Why does a dying <laughs> black man have to help a white woman to live? <laughs> Which I mean, look, 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 I'm not against the whole fact that he gave up his life and stuff. It's just that in the context of today, and like it, this being the first black like major film from Pixar, it's just like so certain things I feel like you just kind of should have avoided. You know what I'm saying? 
So, I mean. Well, I, I'm still floored by the whole, he confused him with another black kid. <laughs> I remember when that happened. It just still went over my head. Went over bro. my head, too, until I like, ran it out. I was like, wow. That's like, that really <laughs> happened. Pretty crazy, bro. When you really think about it. <laughs> I mean, that was my large, my large criticism was that, like, the only time we really get to experience this black animated character is when a white woman is in his body. And everybody's just saying like, oh, everybody is just a number. Everybody, Everybody's explanation was like, everybody's just a number here. And everybody has, you know, every, everybody, there's not like a gender associated or a race associated with a soul, but let's be 100, bro. Like we're human beings. We're naturally associating voices and dialects to race, gender, sexuality, nationality. You got a well-known fucking voice to voice Jamie Foxx character Joe. Tina Fey, like, come on, bro. <laughs> I feel bad, too. Like, I mean, maybe I shouldn't feel bad, but like, I like Tina Fey, but it's just like, dang, like, she really walked into this one. <laughs> it's yeah. not great. It's yeah. not great. Uh, but, I mean, it's not all bad. I think there are a lot of good moments where, like, you do get to see some, like, new things on screen, specifically the barber shop. Mm -hmm. I know, uh, what was it? I think I saw, I can't remember his name, but somebody was talking about the fact that like, it's kind of cool how they show when it was like his big break, the first thing the black man does is go to like the barber shop. Barber That's shop. Pretty. Matthew Cherry even noted, if you don't know who Matthew Cherry is, he created a short animation film that like really blew up. It's called Hair Love. And now mm -hmm. he's being tapped to develop like an like HBO original content, uh, mm -hmm. amazing man, amazing animator and vi amazing visionary when it comes to animation. And so he had brought up the fact that the attention to detail in the barbershop for diversity in texture. Bro, bro. Like, also too, there's like the magazines, right? And one of the photographers mm -hmm. I follow, I should have had this prepared, but like he uh, had an iconic photo shoot of LeBron James, like his rookie year. If you look in the corner, mm -hmm. They have like an animated version of that like magazine. So just got a lot of little wow. things like that. It's really, wow. really dope. Or even the attention to detail of like the person's, the barber's tattoos, like it was very thought out. Another thing was kind of like, do you remember those little blue canisters of cookies mm -hmm. that every black yeah. person or family has? And then you open them, bitches, it's like all types of everything, but not cookies. They had that um, in the in the movie where Joe's mother, played by Felicia Rashad, you know, she has that canister of the black of the cookies, but it has like sewing materials in it. You know, just like a lot of attention to detail, but like some of the major things that should have been like put in consideration weren't really thought of. Like, it's the oh, story. Having, it's the story, bro. Like having a white woman it. voice this character, or <laughs> having him get confused with another black man, like it's a lot. But yeah, it's just a story. Like the actual artist work of it, like the animators did an amazing job. There's a lot mm -hmm. of intention and detail. And other things too, like when he go, gets to the float when he's playing jazz and like the Lost mm -hmm. Souls, some mm -hmm. of those scenes are like beautifully animated. Like the yeah, the scenes, craft, the, the place where the artist goes when they like lose themselves, beautiful. And then seeing all the artists losing themselves in their own mediums, it was amazing. Uh, I will say, maybe I'm just a hater, but like the actual music, <laughs> I wasn't feeling none of that <laughs> but I know I don't really like you know I'm not the biggest jazz guy you know? really well that's something we're not gonna have to agree on I actually really enjoy the jazz so yeah. <laughs> hey to each his own to each very his much own. very much uh but no nah, bro it's like it's not a bad movie I have seen people like bashing it based on the fact that like uh you should bring kids to it because it's like depressing but, like like the things like when he like gets his break and he dies and like stuff like that or just having to explain death to your kids i'm like all right i'm not about to hold that against them because yeah, because that that's a lot of animation films from disney or pixar and all of them like up oh, bro you gotta yeah, explain like... <laughs> infertility you gotta explain death you gotta explain thing. depression here's the thing so... i feel like those are sometimes easier ways to explain those things to your kids it's like a lighter way of getting into it in some instances you know what i mean so it's not mm -hmm. all bad that like these things are in these films Mm -hmm. so I, don't know. I don't know i'm kind of for those things being from like it's a lot and then also have to keep in mind a lot of the times these films are made with the attentions because parents are going to see these films parents are going to watch these films with their kids take their kids to good parents are buying the dvds of it and a lot of times parents are wanting to watch these films with their kids so they have to create that sense of like realness for the older mm -hmm. audience but do it in such more of a palatable like nature to where it can be presentable to children no doubt no doubt yeah I, I agree i agree i have some other things but honestly just i feel like the film is still worth seeing it's just kind of disappointing that they did that hopefully they learn from this you know what i'm saying i mean are they gonna learn it's like 97 percent on rotten tomatoes <laughs> like i mean like a lot of people love the film 
A lot of people. (laughs) And then number two is, this has been a repetitive thing that's been happening for the last 10, 15 years. Thinking about Madagascar, you got Eddie Murphy playing. No, Eddie Murphy playing the donkey in Shrek. Madagascar, uh, Chris Rock playing the zebra. Like, it's been a repetitive thing for a long time now. I'm not as mad as those, but I get your point. I get your point. Is or is, I guess. But, yeah, yeah, I think we can keep it pushing, bro.